First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Hey, all you drama queens, welcome back to episode 11, 111, The Living Years. Isn't that a song? Ooh, yeah, that feels song. good. <laughs> In the living years. It is, the living years, yeah. that's why. Okay, the Eagles, maybe John Henley. <laughs> okay, anyway, listen, here's what happens in this episode. <laughs> um, in this episode, unable to cope with the pressure from Dan, Nathan quits the basketball team. Mm. While Peyton enjoys having her dad home. Daddy. Daddy. And we get to Daddy meet her home. dad for the first Daddy. time, which was such a nice introduction of a new parent to the scenario. Yeah. Um, and I wish we'd gotten to see more of him. This lovely yeah. actor. Thomas Ian Griffith. Yeah. I mean, I had two, three very good actors playing father figures to me. There was Thomas mm-hmm. Ian Griffith here. And then Kevin Kilner came in to play the character later. Mm -hmm. And then John Doe played my birth dad years later. Um, But in this first, like, introduction of Peyton's dad, uh, the character's name was not originally Larry. The character's name was originally Glenn. But I was living above that Oh, Glenn, the guy. The scary guy. Scary guy that would stare at you. Girls, I had so many creepy nights with Glenn. We're like, I would go out on my patio and our patios are right next to each other. And he'd just be like, you alone over there? You know, and I'd like just broken up with my boyfriend and was like living alone. And it was it was the first time I really kind of had to navigate that myself. And you know, I'm that person that's been watching Dateline like forever. And yeah. like before that unsolved mysteries and things. <laughs> so And like SVU marathons on Sundays. Oh my God. Woo! Oh my God. Yes. And so worst case scenario was always like on my mind. But this dude named Glenn that lived next to me had creeped me out enough that when I got the script, I immediately went to our bosses. And I was like, Mm -hmm. guys, he's going to think it's a sign. He's going to think I'm like communicating with him. I want to change the name. Um, And they're like, uh, okay, we don't care. You know, (laughs) like, what do you want to change it to? And my childhood love, like the boy I loved from kindergarten through freshman year in high school was Larry Eppard. He has since married one of like my other great loves, Sarah Yassine, who we cheered with. And I, you know, like, I guess they hadn't gotten married yet, but they had been together since we were in high school. And I was like, Larry is a safe person. Like Larry is the one who I love. Yeah. It's a name I can say with like affection. Like I love you, Larry. Did you tell the show? Did you tell them that the writers? That oh yeah, I was like, it's my childhood love. It's the person who I trust so so much. You know, mm. it was just a name that did sound like a like strong dad energy. Sure, like yeah. there's not a lot of kids walking around named Larry. Like we weren't going to no, run Larry's into a, a Larry at Tree Hill High School. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they're like, sure, but that is how. That's how dad got his name. But yeah, to Joy's point, I had been told, did you guys hear this? I did. Now that once you said it, I I had like echoes in my memory of something. They recast my dad because they thought that we had so much flirty energy. And when I, when we were in the thick of it back in like 2003, I just kind of took their word for it. And now that I'm watching it back, I'm like, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't it. see it at all. I see so much like tenderness, but it doesn't feel like it has a chemistry. It feels really Uh, authentic and and the affection feels real. And he definitely does not, I mean, to me anyway, appear to be flirting with you. No, no. He like Thomas did a really nice job. He did a beautiful job. Poor Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, Well, he's on Cobra Kai now. So he was like the bad guy from Karate Kid. And uh, they're bringing him back on a Cobra Kai now. So I hope he's out there kicking ass. Um, I think we had a good three-episode run with him. It's hard Mm. bringing in a new parent character and having to see these characters that have been really independent. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, like, oh, shucks, daddy. It it felt weird to say daddy. That felt weird. For Peyton, yeah, I could see Uh, that. I could see that. I loved it, though. 
I loved watching the way you guys played your scenes, and I, I love seeing that that sort of youthful innocence in her because she does always have to be a grown-up and like he comes home and and you know you you really seem like a sweet kid and it's nice. we weren't flirting god no. uh, well uh, i'll tell you who was flirty today in this episode was brooke that was yeah. a lot of flirtiness but, but also it was, vulnerable. But then, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it went to a really vulnerable place, which I loved. I loved that arc for you. But mm. yeah, that was that was tough. We were all kind of cringing at that hot tub scene. That was that was a rough oh, way to God. start. Yeah, I mean that that was the scene that led to my you know first ever screaming fight with my bosses, and I Whoa. did what I said I was going to do, which was and what? I came to work for the next scene wearing a turtleneck. So you sweet. sure did, girl. <laughs> I was like. Watch me. <laughs> I, this is completely inappropriate and I will continue to wear, I will wear turtlenecks forever. Is the title of this episode pasties and turtlenecks? Because <laughs> honestly, it should be. It really yes. should be. You could have had the same effect with all of your scenes, whether it's like mm -hmm. from last episode where you're taking the Polaroids to this episode where you're unzipping your pants and stuff. You could have gotten the same effect without turning it up to 11 every time. Yeah. You know, it, it was like somebody read a perfectly good script and was like, you know what we need is more cowbell. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> is the cowbell. <laughs> That's a great Honestly, rubber. they were like, ring the bell, child. Yes. <laughs> You're the cowbell. I will say, though, like, it made me so happy to finally get to a point with her in this episode where – all of that gets taken away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like the the cracking the joke being like, mm, I'm going to borrow this Polaroid in case he's feeling frisky. Like all those gross one-liners. We get to this point where she's she keeps saying like, I feel uncomfortable. I feel scared. I feel like I'm not enough. I feel like I'm not being chosen. I I feel afraid. Yeah. And and it and those scenes grow in intensity. And when she finally gets to say I don't feel like, I feel like we're both being played, which honestly is true. Oh my God, she's so right. She's so right. She's like, he's literally, he's dating us both. It's weird. But by the end, when she gets to sit and be really vulnerable, and it, I kind of feel like it's the foreshadowing for years later when she finally admits that she's terrified she's not enough. Oh, when she's like, I need you to need me. Yeah. Oh, this is the beginning of that. It's the beginning of this girl saying, I don't feel like I am as valuable. I'm scared you're not going to pick me. I'm scared you don't really want me for anything other than, you know. Or that yeah. you have to supplement me with mm -hmm. someone else, mm -hmm. which is a terrible feeling, oh. you know, where it's like, like Brooke Davis is enough. I think our fan base, you know, could like <laughs> fervently yeah. express that. Um, but to know like, oh, you have to go and hang out with a whole other person because you're not stimulated talking to mm -hmm. me or you're not, you know, whatever. I I got nervous watching this. I was like, oh, is Peyton gaslighting Brooke? I mean, like, you're fine. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. And I think, I think, no. And maybe that's mm -hmm. just me being defensive of Peyton. Like, I think she genuinely wanted you to feel like, no, baby, this is your win. This is your yeah. win. But Lucas for sure gaslights her. Like, Lucas for sure is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but you know, you know what I actually see for Peyton? And I have such a heart for it. I see a friend really trying to do her best. Yeah. I think in that scene where you're like, no, you're good and, and you're enough. He's choosing you. I think the reason you leave is because you can't keep going. Like, what a weird moment to leave a person. But I you're think fine. you leave because you're doing your best to be her friend. And and in the last episode, when you, you know, when you left the cafe at open mic night, because seeing us was hard, and I run after you, the, the sort of like missed connection that these girls are having of like, don't feel like a third wheel. You're my best friend. You're more important to me than him. And you're like, yeah, it's the third wheel thing. Like, Sure, sure. Peyton, that's what it is. Peyton is picking Brooke. Yeah. She's saying, you're my best friend. I choose you over this. And it, I don't know, it is. It, it is a love story, these two. For sure. Yeah. I love it. And I, I think when you're, I, I have a lot of like, oh, baby girl, tenderness for Peyton in this position. Because 
what a nightmarish spot to be in. And they're just kids who don't know how to explain the totality of their feelings to each other. Well, I like that Haley is expressing her feeling this, in this episode of loyalty mm-hmm. to Nathan through yeah. booze and skipping school. <laughs> hey, wow. she's got the devil yeah. in her this episode. But honestly, it didn't make me cringe at all. I loved it. it was so I was fun. like, you go, Haley. How when Haley goes buck wild, we're all like, woo, get some. What, why does Haley keep ending up with these hats? Oh, my God. At this point, they're just screwing with you, baby. Yeah, I mean, that was, <laughs> that was the most hideous thing I've ever seen in my life. That was worse than the penis hat. You're saying you don't want to sell that as merch? You don't want to sell the <laughs> Haley James, like, knit goober hat? Maybe that one was the penis hat, and I mixed up my memories. I don't know. No, the other no. one surely looked more phallic. Yeah, it was bad. Um, but I do remember that was the first time I ever had to throw up on anybody on camera. And they gave <gasps> me this cup full of, like, a little like a banana smoothie. And I had to take a sip of it right before I got in the car and hold it in my mouth. The whole time. Yeah, until it's the worst shot. So you just sit there like acting normal and then you have to pretend like something's coming up and then you throw it up. Um, And Paul, (laughs) Paul, I I just had never thrown up in anybody's lap. I did like throw up in his lap. (laughs) Crazy. They didn't done that multiple times. Um, He was a great sport about it. I wish we had him on right now to talk about it, but we'll ask him when we when we see him. Um, but that was a fun day. It was a fun episode. We went out to the beach and um, that house was so gorgeous, uh, Dan's mm-hmm. Beach House. Um, mm-hmm. And it was fun to be, James and I had fun. I think I just remember being outside. He and I hadn't gotten to do a lot of stuff, just the two of us out on a location. We usually were on stage mm-hmm. somewhere. So that might have been the first time it was just the two of us on location somewhere. Has there been another scene that I'm missing? Is it the first time we're on the beach? Might have been. It feels like it. Tree Hill was this kind of like nondescript town in the middle of nowhere. And then they realized like, oh God, we've got this gorgeous ocean right here. Like, (laughs) let's use that. (laughs) But yeah, Yeah. I I feel like the beach kind of belonged to you two. You know, we'd seen it in the distance at the party, but we hadn't been out there, had we? Mm -hmm. I don't think no, so. I, I don't think so. So it was a really, it was a gorgeous house. It was a beautiful day. I had on that stupid hat and uh, I got to play <laughs> drunk, which was so fun. So here's the secret to playing drunk for all you actors out there, um, uh, which I hope I did a good job so that you actually want to take this advice. <laughs> you <But> did. <laughs> you did great. The secret to playing drunk is play sober. So whatever you, mm. what whatever you think mm. you would do, to act sober, like intentionally, mm-hmm. like I am acting, I am, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to be fine. I am fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. That I'm actually fine. is always the thing I do when I have to fine. play drunk is I, I literally like, I get a little like this. I kind of give myself a sway and then She's I swaying I go, back and forth. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm and it puts me right there where I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the sense memory comes back I'm totally fine the spins <laughs> that's the, it. like difficulty opening your eyes <laughs> yeah that but what i like about this episode is that we see Haley and nathan who have nothing in common uh-huh and we see brooke and lucas who have nothing in common and these two couples are trying to navigate like how do we connect mm. and because Haley and Nathan talk so much and they talk about therapy and they, you know, they really like dig into the meat of a relationship. They're getting there, you know, whereas Brooke and Lucas are like, she's begging him. She's like, I want to connect. I want to connect. I want to connect. And he's like, let me put my tongue in your mouth. Right. That's that's how every conversation ends. He's like, sure, baby, you got it. He's like, yeah, let's kiss. Yeah, exactly. Well, and one of the things I love so much too as we look at the difference between the two, that moment, as fun as it was to watch Nathan and Haley skip school and have these little adventures and like, you know, get teenage wild. I loved when he came to her and said, essentially like, I don't want you to change for me. Mm -hmm. I like you. And he says, I like that a person like you sees something in me. And the energy that James brought to that scene, at least for me as a viewer was, it felt like he was saying to her, 
you make me want to change for the better. I don't want you to change to like ditch class. Yeah. But it was good for her though. It was good for yeah. her. Yeah. It was good for her, but I just I loved that he rather than leaning into it and being like let's just keep, you know, partying was like no, but you, I like you. Yeah. Did you ever do a bad thing for a boy? Yeah. In high school. What was the yeah. worst thing that you did? I don't know. I was a I was a pretty tame kid. Oh, I know what I did. I lied. I had a boyfriend who was real bad. We've talked about him. Mm-hmm. And uh, he snuck out of school and went home and like had lunch and then drank a beer and then came back to school and the English teacher smelled beer on him. And so he got sent to the principal's office and they like didn't have a breathalyzer at the high school. <laughs> yeah. and, and they they were like, you have been drinking. And he's like, what are you talking about? They're like, you've been drinking. And he said, no, I have not. I did go home. I did. I'll admit that I skipped school and I went home and I had leftovers from last night. I went to Outback Steakhouse with the Burtons last night because we had gone out to dinner and my parents had had him like join us. But he didn't get like beer soaked pizza. Or, you know, like what? <laughs> what smells like beer the next day? And so they called me into the office and they're like, is this story true? And I had to be like, oh, yeah, oh. for sure. It's the leftover Outback Steakhouse. That's what you're smelling, friends. And it was traumatic because I was like student government and like, you know, oh, super good. That's hilarious, though, Hill. Did, Soph, did you ever do anything in high school that was like bad for a boy? <gasps> yeah. Oh, man. Well, oh, I remember my junior year in high school, my friend's parents were going out of town the weekend of prom, which I'm like, I mean, well, what, what parent doing? plans that? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty stupid. You planned it? Like, you set us up. <laughs> and because I was like, you know, a pretty type A responsible kid. I remember her parents being like, well, the two of you are in charge. And I was like, I'm not in, I'm not in this family, but okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, like, Sure. Because I think the idea was, you know, we know nine times out of ten, like, you know, Sophia's the designated driver. If there's, like, house parties Yeah, Sophia had a checklist. She's like, turn the yeah. porch lights on at 8.30. Yeah. You know? I was like, <laughs> I, I, I got wild from time to time, but I was generally too scared. And so I, I think they were kind of like, you'll make sure things don't get out of hand. And we had some friends uh, that liked to be out of hand and mm-hmm. what was supposed to be like 20 people having an after prom party turned into like 150 people at the house in what? the pool it was a rager <gasps> it was insane that's and way I, too many people you were like Lindsay lohan and mean girls no it was on it felt like a movie like it was <laughs> so crazy there were so many people and i remember just being like what are we gonna do and like trying to manage stuff but also you know, trying to make sure, I don't know. I didn't want to like be a dork. Be, I didn't want to be like a, you know, stick in TA. the mood. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, things just got so wonky safe. Thank God. But I was terrified. I could just and, picture um, you like looking in the bathrooms to make sure there's still enough toilet paper for everyone. Like, 100%. 100%. Oh yeah. That's I was so like, you. I was like, Oh, you need a bottle opener here. Oh, you need yeah. toilet paper here. Like whatever. I, I remember, one of this guy who a girl at my school was dating was like showing us something and I didn't want, I was like, cool. Like, I don't know what that is. And literally years later when I was in college, the first time I ever saw a person roll a joint, I was like, Oh my God, he was smoking marijuana. (laughs) Like I was such a dork. I just didn't know. And so, um, I remember going, I, I went to sleep that night and like, there were obviously not enough beds for everyone. And I slept in a bed with my boyfriend what and it turned into this like massive scandalous like because of course we got caught we all got caught yeah of course um we tried to lie it didn't go well that's what i did (laughs) i lied i lied to my friend's parents because i tried to say only a couple people came and then they invited other people and then which was true but we were like uh and i don't know why we said this we were like everyone was out by 1 a.m we swear 
And my mm-hmm. friend's dad holds up a photo like this and goes, so why does the clock behind this guy opening a beer in my kitchen say 4.30? And we were like, ah! And then somebody had taken a picture of my high school sweetheart and I asleep in a bed together. But they did it because the joke was, this poor guy's been dating Sophia for three years. <laughs> she, she won't put out. She won't put out. <laughs> like, the poor it's his kid. one trophy. <laughs> yeah, everyone was like, oh, 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 oh. And, and so then it turned into this thing where, like, weirdly, parent, like, the parents were like, what did you do? And I was like, I, I slept. Yes. Yeah. I, I was sleeping. What are you talking about? And, man, it was a whole, oh, it so was like sorry. a whole big thing. Luckily, he has the loveliest family and his parents were just like the fact that you give us give us a break y'all were fine um but i i definitely felt bad because i lied i lied to my friend's parents about the time Mm. but that was really not that wasn't for a boy so much as just for us because we were trying to not get grounded until we graduated (laughs) it's the lion man joy were you a liar like we were uh no i was pretty good i mean no i i can't think of anything i did bad for a boy i i really like no that was that was really have have annoyed me and my best friend at the time who i was totally in love with in high school who was a boy was also a good kid so you know he was like a upstanding young man citizen always trying to do the right thing um Mm. no I do. I don't know why this is coming to mind because it's not really on topic, but I'll tell you anyway. I remember because <laughs> um, I, I guess it. it's a misunderstanding. I did. I did feel like because I, I mean, it's because I'm an artist or a theater kid. I told you like I would change in the backseat of a car, whether it was a boy or girl driving, mm. like whatever I would yeah. ha- like. I just yeah. was used to dance and theater and you just I was very comfortable yeah. with my body. Um, but not in like, a, I wasn't trying to fuck everybody. I just was like comfortable in my body. And I, and by the way, it's a bang and body joy. I'd be comfortable in that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, so it just, I, but I knew that I felt misunderstood a lot. I felt like people mm-hmm. looked at me like I was trying to get attention with my body and that I was trying to be slutty when I wasn't. I just was like a dancer kid, theater kid. Oh, you mean they were mad at you because you didn't feel insurmountable shame about just being a girl? <laughs> Shocking! Put a scarlet letter on her. I remember going up to his lake house. He and his family had this had this lake house, and I remember going up to it one summer, and um, and I got there's there was a shower, um, and we were kind of like, I don't know if I had just if we were, it was a bunch of kids that weekend. I think his parents maybe weren't there, and I remember I got. I was taking a shower and he came in to brush his teeth and there was a big curtain. It's not like we could see each other, but, and we were very, very close, like besties, like since we were 13. Mm -hmm. So this was a very Lucas Haley relationship, except that I was desperately in love with him. (laughs) It's okay. It all worked out. But, um, I, uh, I was in the shower and I don't know if you guys do this when I, when you turn on the hot water again, being like a tactile person and being in touch with my body, I just sit there under the heat and I'm like, ah, And I just like, yeah. you know, let, I let it all, like, bleh, I'm a singer and I'm vocal. And so I'm sitting in this shower and he's brushing his teeth and I'm in this steaming shower going, ah, oh. <laughs> and he just goes, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he just like, go, he stops the water and he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, oh God, I didn't so, even clock that. But it wasn't like he was turned on. He was like mad at me for trying Why to would you do, do something. This? I was like, like I'm, I'm not nothing i'm i'm just i'm taking a shower oh god oh no no i'm not and he was like oh, whatever joy and then like, you know rinses his mouth and walked oh. out of the bathroom he was mad at me and i just don't i like i could never have said anything to convince him that i was not like trying to turn him on and get him well, isn't that shower? when all those herbal oh, no. essence commercials were out remember the herbal yeah. essence commercials where it was like the woman and oh, moaning in the shower yes <laughs> Isn't that so yeah, that funny? Made me so uncomfortable. You guys, I'm so red. Yeah, I just had to let it go. I had to let it go. I was like, well, uh, he's going to think I'm a slut. Okay. He thinks also, I'm Also, the to, acoustics whatever. in the bathroom are supreme. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. No, it was of spectacular. Course you're sounds. Yeah. Um, I'm red too. I'm sweating uh, just even thinking about yeah, it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm horrifying. So uncomfortable. Embarrassing moments from high school. Also, we have I all just had realized, them. you guys, I, I need to say this. <laughs> so, we threw this party that got out of hand after prom. <laughs> She's still and, upset about the party. No, I'm, I'm so upset. And um, and we got caught, and it was so sad. And my mom really did me a solid, and was like, "If I tell your father 
he is going to kill you, which honestly doesn't make sense. My dad's like a very sensitive artist. I don't think that would have happened. But my mom goes, I'm going to tell your dad I found a pack of cigarettes in your car and that's why you're grounded for three weeks. (gasps) And so, um, dad, you should probably know that when I was a junior in high school, we threw a rager of an after prom party and um, mom and I lied to you about why I was grounded for three weeks. I don't think he knows. Hi, dad. I was realizing that in real time. Um, my sweet dad who <laughs> cries every time he tells me he's proud of me probably wouldn't have flipped out. Um, but I, I, it, I was today years old when I realized I still had a secret from him. I so. love this Sorry, confession. Dad. The Hi, dad. cigarettes. <laughs> my my mom. I was like, what? Oh, all right, whatever. That's sure, my, mom. Yeah. Confessional moments. <laughs> Um, okay, how do we get back into the show right now? Well, <laughs> my question is, okay, so Sophia, oh, if your yes. dad would have been upset about you having this party like in high school. Yeah. When we shot this, we're only like a couple years out of high school. We're yeah. like, you know, three, four years out of high school. How did your parents react to all this like hot tub stuff? Like all the yeah. sexy time stuff? Yeah, they did all the other love stuff. That. They, they were like, this is, <sighs> what is this? You know, I think it was just, it was always, it was uncomfortable for, for them, you know, Mm -hmm. like as a kid, I don't know. I don't think any of us or anyone listening, like you don't want to see your parents have sex. And I don't think parents want to think about their kids having sex either. No, it's awkward enough when it comes on on a movie and you're all sitting in the room together. It's like, like, oh man. (laughs) And, and you know, there's, that probably points to the fact that as a society, we need to grow up a little bit and like get unashamed of our bodies. Joy, teach a class. Um, you know what does it real quick? I just showed Gus the Shining, where you know, like the hot naked woman in the bathtub yeah. gets out, oh. and, they, and he's being oh, a creep, no. and they start kissing, and then her body decomposes. <laughs> right. So I just watched that with Gus, and he never wants to see a naked woman ever in his whole life. <laughs> he's, he's ruined. You're all witches. <laughs> yeah, their like, body's gonna fall apart and rot. Um, that'll do it. Yeah, that's wow. the only sex scene that's acceptable is when wow. <laughs> she turns into a corpse. Well, and the irony that here we are, you know, talking about like crazy teenage behavior, which we were always modeling on the show and like <laughs> everyone's flirting with everyone and they recast your dad because apparently y'all were flirting and there was no sexual Zero. energy between you. I don't see it. I mean, maybe it'll come up in future episodes, but I maybe. didn't clock it at all you know who has real sexy energy and they have a scene in this episode and i was like oh man deb and keith girl that was hot talk like when they're chatting and he's like yeah send nathan to talk to me i'm just like Mm -hmm. isn't it a little warm how chemistry works because i do love keith and karen and and there's a there's a no like they know each other and there's a warmth there Mm -hmm. there's something familiar it's tender but there was like some kind of heat, some kind of energy between uh-huh. Deb and Keith. Ooh, I don't know how well, that happened. And, and interestingly, though, C- Craig is like a, a f- I don't want to say he's a flirty person, but he is a person who listens. Yeah. And he looks at you when he's talking mm-hmm. to you and it feels nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so his character like listens to the women. He listens to Deb. He yeah. listens to mm. Karen. He wants to tell them both like, you're a good mom. Yeah. You're doing a good job. Yeah. He says the things that you want to hear. Lucas is copying that behavior. And he's yeah. telling Brooke, girl, you are great. And he's telling mm. Peyton like, your art matters. You know, like it's, yeah. I don't know how intentional it is, but it is a generational pattern that we're witnessing except Mm. that the way lucas is doing it is i guess the way a teenage boy would which is mimicking rather than uh i I don't know what help me with the vocabulary word of like he's he's mimicking it he's not actually it's not a coming from an authentic place of really listening and caring i think he's mimicking the he wants to kiss the hot girl yeah yeah well it it seems like he wants to kiss all the girls (laughs) like you know the the continuation of the way he shows up for Peyton and then the way he shows up for Brooke, it makes sense to me why Brooke says, I think he's, you know, when she says he's trying to have it both ways, he's like, he's basically trying to date us both. Mm-hmm. And, and when you watch it, you're like, yeah, I mean, he kind of is. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. He's confused. It's probably the most 16 year old thing about Lucas. Yeah. You know, yeah. they like wrote, they like, I love books and I'm a man and I'm the man of the house and I think about <laughs> yeah. things. But like ultimately, 16 year old boys want to get down with as many girls as they can get down with. You know, like yeah. it's just, mm-hmm. it's. Well, yeah. It, I a think the most thing. juvenile thing about the character is the immaturity with his emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if he didn't have that, you'd probably be like, come on, this, this is not a kid. No, it'd be James Vanderbeek. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dawson, no, so it's fully. terrible for Brooke and Peyton, but it works really well, you know, for for a young boy. I like it in the show, too, because it's a good mm-hmm. contrast with where Nathan is at, having already experienced all of the stuff that Lucas is just kind of walking into, wading into the yeah. world. Nathan's already been through all that, so now he's on this journey to self-discovery, to d- discovering how to be a better person in the world. He's seeing Dan for mm-hmm. who he is. He's really confused and torn in so many directions, but he's mm-hmm. learning how to stand up for himself. I mean, mm-hmm. I was just so in love with the character of Nathan in this episode. He really yeah. won my heart in a big way. Uh, I was just proud of him, the way he walked away from the, the two parents arguing about who, who's yeah. going to give him a ride. And he's like, I'm, I'm going to take care of me, you know, setting his own boundaries. It's pretty great. I loved it. I loved, we were watching the episode, you guys, and it was so cute. I don't even remember what scene it was, but a scene with, with, with Nathan ended and Joy, you go, I'm team Nathan, man. (laughs) (laughs) Team Nathan all the way. No. Yes. We love it. It was so cute. The Dan Scott, I love you, Mm -hmm. only exists because of Nathan asserting himself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But was such a, a great piece of acting from Paul. And it was shot so well. What I loved, loved, loved about it is that it's super tight. Mm -hmm. So it feels like a whisper. And it's over Dan's shoulder. Yeah, Yeah. over the back. Those French overs. It feels like I can't look you in the eye when I say this. And, Mm -hmm. And, you know, normally when you shoot a scene, it's like your master shot, which includes the whole set and all the actors, big wide shot, and then coverage, coverage. You get Mm -hmm. coverage of each character. For them to use that angle on Paul and do a whole mm-hmm. camera setup for that, that secret special. Mm-hmm. I love you. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really, really good. That's good TV. Yeah. It's such good TV. And and the way Paul chose to play it, mm-hmm. you know, saying how much he cares about him, no matter what he chooses, he says these things and starts to cry. I mean, his, you know, he has tears in his eyes and the, that pregnant pause where he says all the validating things and that's already so hard for him. And it's like he almost chokes before he says, I love you. And he and you're right. He can't look Nathan in the eye when he does it. Oh, I mean, what a what a vulnerable place for Paul to have gone as an actor. What beautiful choices he made in that moment. Yeah, I agree. It was lovely. Considering he's such a bastard and all the other scenes. Well, I'm considering that the scene starts, by the way, with Nathan coming in and saying, I'm really sorry for all the stuff I've been pulling. And Hillary, when we watched it, you were like, he's apologizing to his abuser. Yeah, maybe nuts. And then we get to the end of the scene and we're like, oh man, Paul did really good. It's it's such a weird thing when you're trying to observe the characters, but you're also watching your friends be incredible actors. Yeah. Tom Tom Wright did a great job directing this episode. I I especially Mm -hmm. loved the ending when we got to see everybody in their own place of kind of Mm -hmm. feeling out their own sense of Mm -hmm. loss, confusion, misplacement um, in the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, hoping for hope. Uh, I felt like we got a piece of all of that, which was a tone that I think had been missing a little bit from the last few episodes. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of got away from that with all the drama. And this episode seemed to come back to the heart, the core of what this show is about. It's not about the drama. It's about the people. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, and the space for big feelings. I mean, I, even thinking about the fact that it opens in the therapist's office, right? It's like, this is going to be an episode where we really excavate what's going on with everybody. And it, and it rings true through the whole thing. And it's really good. Yeah. I loved that. I want to talk about Jake Jagelski. Let's talk about him. (laughs) <laughs> all the time i mean jake jagelski is a really 
grounding character in this because he makes Lucas kind of cut the shit. Mm. And he's got way bigger things going on than anyone else. You know, like having a child yep. is such a major deal that it's like, mm-hmm. oh, your feelings got hurt by a boy? Cool story, kid. You know? <laughs> right. um, I I loved working with Brian. Like, it's not a secret that I was just like, oh, my God, he's so cool. <laughs> um, but to see him with these scenes with the baby in this episode and bringing her to practice and mm-hmm. the slow burn between Peyton and Jake. She has not, mm-hmm. like, I mean, we see, like, little twinkle in her eye, but Peyton has not been like, sup. Whereas so many other characters in our show are just like, I love you, like, right away. Like, Mm -hmm. the rush into relationships. Like, even, Sophia, you were saying when, in the last episode, when, um, when Brooke shows up and she's like, hi, boyfriend. And we were like, oh, we're there. I was like, what? We're on the B word? Yeah. (laughs) Fine. Yeah. Uh, the slow burn with, with Jake, I like. I'm slow to warm Mm -hmm. up in real life. Mm -hmm. It's good for Peyton. Same. This is sort of what we were talking about in the episode that we saw where, everybody was goading you and you kissed Lucas out of spite almost. And then Mm -hmm. suddenly you guys were in a bedroom tearing each other's clothes off. And he's telling you, I want everything with you. I want the whole fairy tale (gasps) after like four episodes. It's just like, you know, I mean, he just met you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Chill the fuck out, man. Like what? Yeah. And this feels, that's what I was saying when we were watching, I get such soulmate vibes from Jake and Peyton because he is waiting for her he gets it and she's she takes time and he takes time he's got plenty of going on too and i just Mm -hmm. feel like it was such a good match and i'm so mad that we got (coughs) robbed and we didn't get to see you guys together forever i agree that's all i'm off my soapbox we were supposed to do in a different movie there was a movie that we were supposed to do together years ago (gasps) really yeah something he did and they like called to see if i could do it and i had like you know i had a toddler and jeff was gone and i wasn't able to go do it but Greenberg is one of those people. I've gotten to work with so many of our friends doing mm. Christmas movies. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like Tyler and Buckley and, you know, yeah. Antoine and Lee and all, you know, the whole gang that um, I haven't gotten to work with Brian again. And I would like to. He's a we gotta fun do it. We need it because we've seen part. That's going to give me my my Peyton and Jake for life moment. It's the ending we, we want yes. to see. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> we you know what's funny, though? Like when you point out how swiftly characters are like, all of it. You've changed my life. You're my You've everything. You've changed like, my life in whoa. three episodes. Yeah, it's like, gee, this is a lot. Like, so I, much pressure. I love, and I I guess I'm like, oh, that that's what I relate to. Like the moment in the last episode at the open mic night, when there's just that beat between Peyton and Jake and, and you like look at him, I'm like, oh, it's that's everything. And I'm like, I guess that's how I flirt. I'm like- Hey, and then I don't talk because <laughs> like, I'm I'm slow to do the warm up too. I don't know. Greenberg in real life was became like a good friend to me season one because I'd mm-hmm. gone through that breakup. I was like starting to date someone new. I didn't have a car. He went car shopping with me, and like mm-hmm. I remember we were like looking at mountaineers. Like that, he was like, "What you need is a mountaineer." Like, let's go look at <laughs> do I is that what I need? Yeah, I was like, sure, mister. That'll get you in my car. Cool. <laughs> but then he became, I'd, I'd never lived in L.A. And so he became the person when we started to have to go out to L.A. for press for the show that would, like, show me where to eat dinner and, like, where to go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that same cool dude energy. Like, girl, I'm not I'm not into you, but I'm your cool guy friend. You know, Jake has that. He's yeah. not looking for a girlfriend you know, everything's about the daughter and mm-hmm. his interests lie outside of, I want to put my tongue in that girl's mouth. That's, that's what sets him apart from the other boys. Yeah. We're like, wow, look at that guy. And then it's like, oh man, the bar's n- maybe not that high. He's, <laughs> he's high above it, but I feel like the bar's kind of low. <laughs> Set your bars high, ladies. Uh, it's high school. It's listen, I kissed so many people in high school and I don't regret a bit of it. No That's way. That's when Jose. you're supposed to kiss people. Yes. Get it out of your system. Oh man, when I lived in New York after high school, I kissed so many people. So fun. You did? Of course. What's the best? Give me the best New York mm. City post high school kiss. Oh my gosh. 
where you hear like kiss me <laughs> well, I told you about the guy that was at, from, from Juilliard that I, you know, we were dancing around it and I was standing mm-hmm. outside of his college dorm and he like answered, I went back because I left something there and he answered the door shirtless and then like, I was like, I'm dying right oh. now. And then he, he hugged me and I, like my heart was pounding and he goes, your heart's pounding. <laughs> like, oh God. Oh, no. oh, it was very exciting. Um, but I actually don't even remember if we kissed then. I think I ran away. Like I always did. I just, I was like, I'm okay. Blah, and then just ran off. But I did, I was dating a guy in New York and I remember it was just like a dreary night. We went to see some Beatles movie at like one of those, you know, movie theaters underground that, that uh, played old movies. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the draft, some draft house or something. And then, um, yeah, I remember going outside and it was like, it was on the east side and it was drizzly and we just kissed on a street corner and it was mm. so be- and by the way this is somebody who had been dating my roommate <gasps> and then Joy scandal i know and then he it, it, this is the high school thing oh my gosh hillary this is the same thing that happened to you the switcheroo and then he was like yeah i think i like your roommate instead and i was like i don't know if i but oh my god i think i was kind of like broke in this boys scenario. love the switcheroo and she was like i'm wow. fine it's fine whatever don't worry about it you know i wasn't that into him anyway and then of course years later she was like that wrecked me i was like i'm sorry oh god you're like but you said but we, oh wow I, you know it is realistic it is. i guess it's your broken Peyton moment we're just Young and dumb, and we don't understand our emotions, and we don't have anybody telling us what's okay and what's not okay. No. We're just trying to figure it out. And no. you so badly want to be okay yeah. with things to like be cool. Do you think a, it's mature? You know, team player and team player. Like, just, no, just tell me how you feel. Here's the thing: if you're young out there <laughs> listening, we just need you to go be as messy as humanly possible because <laughs> one, you'll get to laugh about it yeah. when you get older mm-hmm. safely, um, please. And Two, it's a good yeah. way to practice chaos. Like, like mm. chaos from kissing somebody is so easy. It seems yeah. big when you're young, but mm-hmm. it's a really easy practice tool so that when you're older and like real shit hits the fan, yeah. you're like, oh, I know how to deal with this. <laughs> yeah. I kissed the wrong person once and I practiced these feelings. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I yeah. kissed somebody. There was a boy my, right before I left for college that I worked with and he was older and he was very, um, he felt dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like one of our dates was like, we went to a a cemetery that was supposed to be real haunted. (laughs) And he'd been living alone in like a farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. And you know, like, and he drove like a muscle car. Serial killer. (laughs) I know. I'm like, are is this true detective? (laughs) Baby. He was so good looking. And I was like, I'm working with this guy, but I, I'm going to kiss him for sure. And so we went out. We had to, I don't know where we went one night. And he picked me up and he brought me home. And like we talked on my parents' front stoop for a long time. And I was like, well, I'll walk you to your car. My parents' neighborhood had the best show because I was kissing a new dude every other week. <laughs> like that's the last summer before college. And as like we got to his car door, we just stood there. And I was like, I don't want it to be awkward at work. And he goes, it's been awkward at work. <gasps> yeah. And then kissed me. And I was just yeah. like, this is a movie. This is wow. awesome. Wow. That is yeah. good. Kiss as many people as possible. Yeah, Let's do it. for sure. I'm down with that. Oh, I know what I want to talk about in this episode. Oh, yeah, go, go. I make up. Um, because you guys have met Jojo. You haven't met Kelly Jefferson yet, who was the mm-hmm. other half of that dream team. Um, Sophia, your eye makeup in particular is Ooh, so on point. So beautiful. It's so good. It's so bold. Talk to us about the collaboration between you and Kelly Jefferson to create oh, the iconic early two thousands look. Eye? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I I wish I could remember how it started but when kelly came in because you know she wasn't our our makeup artist right in the beginning yeah she was like this girl is into fashion and she and we were like looking through magazines because there was no pinterest yet (laughs) and and we really got into this idea which i love because it's like brooke's trying to make herself up like the girls she sees in the magazines 
but she's 16, so she like matches her eyeshadow to her outfit. No. And I just love it. And we really thought a lot about how to do it and how to bring um something young to it. Cause it's a it's a it's a it's a look that you see on girls in their twenties. Yeah. You know, or at least you did then. And so we really wanted to figure out how to make it feel like, you know, this young girl who was super into makeup, but she didn't have like an eye she did every day. She like coordinated with her outfits. And I don't know. I, I just now, loved it. And Kelly you know and I the had candies a ball. ads. Remember the candies ads? Yeah. The shoes. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like that kind of color and that mischief yeah. is like really kind of how yeah. the Brooke character started to to feel of like, I'm gonna wear this juicy lip gloss today. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got really into God, we bought so many palettes of really colorful eyeshadow. We got really into like super glossy lip gloss. I mean, Kelly and I really, really worked on what that girl looked like. It's awesome. Yeah, Joy, you, your eye makeup was really good too. Did you, Yeah. once you started dating Nathan, did that free you up to be flirtier aesthetically? Because uh, they really tried to make you like, you know, the girl that didn't wear any makeup in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was part of it. She was like just experimenting a little bit more with feel it, wanting to feel grown up. Um, but I also don't know that we put, I don't think I put that much thought into it. I might have, but I don't remember. But was Kelly on this episode? She must have been because that is such yeah. a Kelly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that was just her instinct was to was to draw out my brown eyes. I don't know. Try and make them look. <laughs> bigger or something doughier i don't know but Dirty. she knows we'll she, did, she did a great job yeah we need to ask her for sure she'll tell us kelly um, ray gore jefferson okay so destiny wants to know after so many years of doing the show how were you guys able to snap into character and back into your own personality during filming and do you think that affected your actual personality I think it would be the other way around. For me, I mean, my personality would have affected the character more than the character affecting my personality. I think. I hope. Yeah, I mean, I've said it in the past. I feel like part of the reason I got so goofy in interviews or just like kind of flippant and would lie is because I needed people to understand that I'm not Peyton Sorry. Like I, I'm yeah. not an innately sad person, so I would mm. clown it up mm-hmm. a lot. I still yeah. do, because um, I also just don't like wallowing in sh- you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not a wallower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just be sad and move on. Me too. Yeah, I I feel that. I don't like to wallow, but I, I am really analytical and really introspective and really want to, like, I want to suck the marrow out. You know, I want to get the lesson. I want to understand systems. Like, I like technical things, and none of that you see in Brooke. We got a glimpse and, of it this episode where she's like, I need to know your hobby. Yeah, that's true. I need to know what you like. I need to know what you like and I want to like it too. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I think what was hard, and, and I talked about this a little bit before too, it was hard for me to feel like people thought I was some like out there super sexual person because Brooke was. Because it it brought an energy and like a, a gaze my way that made me feel very, um, very exposed and very uncomfortable. So I, it's interesting. I I know that as the years went on, there were things about my personality, to Joy's point, that affected Brooks more. Um, and I do think I took some some lessons from Brooke. You know, I God, I was such a people pleaser. I. I was a pro at like ignoring red flags and just being a good girl. And, and Brooke really taught me to be like, I'm not going to put up with this. Sh-. Like, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm done. You know, we're finished here. This is the line. You've crossed it. I, I didn't have that when I started playing her at all. That took me years to cultivate. And I, in hindsight, and like, I don't know, but in hindsight, I, I feel like she probably helped me learn that. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was I like, like I'm done <laughs> <laughs> i'm done i'm just crying in my cheerios still just feeling big feelings <laughs> dealing with my kids you know it's so Ooh. funny because i like my son is a really tender animal 
And so sometimes when we're watching these episodes and I see Peyton being like particularly sensitive, I it like it's like watching Gus in a wig. Aww. Because he he has the chin tremble when he gets upset. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> oh my god. That's my kid. Yeah. Yeah. He can't watch these till he's much, much, much older. <laughs> Otherwise he'll just be able to manipulate me. <laughs> <laughs> It's too much. All right, we got another question. Joy, what's our next question? Oh, I like this one. I, and I and I've we've talked about this, but I think the fans will love to know. Um Erin has a question about stage names. Mm-hmm. Uh she asks, "Have you ever considered or did you ever consider using a stage name instead of your real name?" And Joy, why do you use Bethany if you don't go by that <laughs> name? Is there a story behind why you go by Joy instead of Bethany? Um yeah, I'll run into my my portion portion of this real quick. Um, I I of course considered using a stage name when I was younger because I was obsessed with the name Rose, and I remember going on an audition once with my mother, and I was old enough to sign my name. I, she made me sign myself into the sign in sheet, so I must have been, I think I was probably ten, nine or ten, and I uh, wrote my name as Rose Lens on the sign in sheet. Cause I wanted to Whoa. see what, you know, what it would sound like to have somebody call that out. And if I liked it. And so she said, you know, somebody came out called Rose, Rose lens. And I stood up and walked in and my mom's like, um, <laughs> you know. do you know where you got the name from? Where'd you hear it? That you were like, that's the one I don't, I've just, and it's my daughter's middle name. I've just always, I don't know that name just very uh, syn- syncopated with me in some, in some deep way. Um, symbiotic. I don't know what the word is anyway. Um, but yeah. And then I changed the spelling of my name to J O I E when I was 13, just in high school and went by J O I E lens for many years professionally, uh, and then changed it. When I got one tree Hill, I was, um, just going through sort of a shift in my life and trying to figure out, I guess, wanting to be more authentic and not trying to be whatever everybody else what I thought everyone else wanted me to be, um, Mm -hmm. which is like the theme of my life. It's something I've been trying to figure out how to, uh, it's been a very, it's funny being my age now and looking back and being like, man, like, God, it took me a long time. Like I was aware that that was a problem of mine when I was 20, Mm -hmm. but it's still working its way out of my system. (laughs) It takes time. My God. Yeah. So that's why I I decided to use my whole name. I've never personally liked the name Bethany for me. Um, but I I felt I was it was more of like a leap of faith. Like I'm just gonna like embrace fully who I am and just go for this and use my whole name. Um so whatever. I still wish I was Rose Lens, mm-hmm. but it's it's too late now. <laughs> Rose Joy Lens. Yeah, it's funny. I because I I I interestingly know a lot of guys who go by their middle name. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, and I, I don't really know where that comes from. If someone wants to give us the research on that, we would love it. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I always thought was cool about you using your full name, you know, first, middle, last, was that people who aren't really close to you <laughs> will call you Bethany and we get to call you Joel. It's also how we know who's full of <laughs> it does. It does I, help. It helps to know yeah. when somebody says, Hey, Bethany. And I'm like, Oh, you don't know me. Yes. How can I help you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if somebody calls me joy, then I know they know me. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just think that's so cool. I, I never thought to use one. Hill, did you? So when we started doing the show, I never had this problem at MTV. I had this problem when we started doing the show is, you know, like the, the creepy message boards, people started accusing me of making up my name because the spelling is like all wonky. What? And what? they were like, she's trying so hard to get attention by like changing, like clearly that's not her real name. Uh, and I remember being like, you know when you get mad about dumb stuff It's not stuff like your name was like Tiger. Yeah, well, that'd like, be cool. What? I mean, it would be no, cool. No, I'm named, you know how I got my name? I guess this is the story that I got. My mother was like turbo pregnant. And if I was going to be a boy, I was going to be named after my dad. Um, but she didn't have a girl name and I guess she went to her brother's house and there was a golden retriever next door that was like yapping. And this woman comes out of the back door and is like, Hillary, Hillary, knock it off. You know? And my mom was like, (sighs) cool. I mean, that's the story that I've gotten over the years, but a yappy golden retriever with an IE Hillary with an IE. Yeah. I, you know, 
I thought about going uh, as Hillary Ross. Mm. My middle name is Ross with one S. See, mm. again, it was like a weird spelling cool. thing. I like it. it. I don't know, guys. Um, but no, I I don't know. Even now, you know, I'm Hillary Burton Morgan now, and it just feels like so many syllables. I know. Bethany Joy Lenz. And that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't like, it's not like, oh, I like Sarah it. Jessica Parker. It all rolls off your tongue. It made signing autographs significantly more work. I know. Right? You should just do your initials. Yeah. H- HBM. HBM. The BM yeah. is a little. Am well, I a, am I a BM girl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a 10 year old about it. Like, yes, oh, you're perfect. Yeah. You're like, oh, I don't know what that means. Um, oh my God. If you just, I, I need you to do just once sign something, Hillary Pope. Just like, <laughs> just, just, I'm just Hillary number us. two. Mm-hmm. Hillary two. Um, I, I don't know. I love, I like the sound of your name with Jeff's name. It, it feels very complete. Do you know what it yeah. feels like to me? Farrah Fawcett Majors. That's what I thought yeah. of when I added the yeah. Morgan on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I always wanted three names. Everybody like else it. got three names. You got it. I Chad and Joy cool. got three names. I never thought to have a stage name. And honestly, I kind of wish I did because people are so freaking creepy. Yeah. Like, most people are nice, but the ones that are creepy are so deeply creepy. They like track down your parents. Yeah. And it's like, I really wish I had a, like a layer of protection, mm. like even with silly things, like, you know, certain verifications you need, like for your bank where you have to give them your mom's maiden name. I can't. Yeah. I had to make something up. And I mean, we all, this is obviously a thing we all share. I, yeah. It, it, I don't know it. It, it really irks me. Like, I I am such a believer in, like, respect and boundaries. So when they get crossed, it, like, it, it makes me, like, not be able to sleep at night. And, oof, it just, like, it, it really, like, affects my feelings. And so I'm like, man, You're if right? I had a stage name, maybe I could have just had, Hold a, on. like, a whole Let's space. Th- like, what would your stage name be? In a perfect world, okay, what's your think stage about this. name? It's 1955. You're... You yeah. go in the studio, you show up at mm-hmm. 20th Century Fox or what was the big mm. studio back then? I don't know. MGM. A- MGM, fine. fine. You go to MGM, Metro Golden Mayor, and they've got the little window and you walk up to the window and there's a guy sitting there and he's got two things of index cards. One is first names, one is last names. And that's how they picked your name, by the way. Is that really is that what he did? Yep. You would just file through the thing and pick a card at random and pick another card at random. And there you go. Ava Gardner. No. Yep. Stop. That's it. Okay, so what will yours be? I was also today years old when I learned this. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. We need we need good stage names so that I when we do our next series together. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Here's mine. Eve Harling. Mm. Ooh, Harling. Harling. Mm. I love it. <laughs> Eve is really good. I I would take Oh, there's all sorts of names I love the sound of. But man, let me tell you what, I would love to have not shared a last name with two former U.S. presidents, especially because Remember my dad everybody is from Canada. Related? Yeah. Everyone, it's so insane. And I still get people who like yell at me who were like, you know, you're, you're so progressive. Your family must be embarrassed. I'm like, my family's from Canada and I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but so yeah, it would have been cool to not have had that. I would, I would have taken a an index card of whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'll take anything you got. I always wanted to be got? someone really bitchy, like like mm. Andromeda Sykes, you know, like <laughs> like something kind of androgynous and just like yeah. oh, I'm hard. I'm a hard. That. I'm yeah. Andromeda. That's good. Mm. Yeah, evil. Mm. Um, yeah, we like evil. Evil works. You know what yeah. I mean. Every movie needs an evil person. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, man. Like a, like a name like Cruella Deville. Mm. It's so good. So good. Should we, should, while we're talking about selecting things at random, should we spin the wheel? Oh, spin let's spin the wheel. That's a good segue, Joy. Okay, what do we got? The oh, winner oh. is most likely to live with their mom as an adult. Well, okay, so character. Most likely to live with their mom as an adult. Wait, did Brooke live with Victoria? No. Did Victoria live with Brooke? I think Victoria lived with Brooke, maybe. She didn't live with me. I would have loved it, honestly. If I 
If I could have gotten more hilarious scenes, like with, you know, Daphne, Daphne just juggling stuff at home, I would have loved it. Yeah. Who, which character would live with their mom? As Can I sign Brooke up to live with her mom now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fine. Call I'm Daph. into it. I think Keith would have, but in not in the derogatory way that I think this is implying. I think he would have mm. done that to care for. He seems like the most nurturing that would be yeah. the kind of person yeah. that would have stuck around. Oh, like and that. actually, Craig himself also would be the type of person that would, yeah, would do that. Yeah, Craig Keith, winner, winner, yeah. chicken dinner, into it. Yeah, and in like, the sweetest way, but in a He's loving a, way. Yeah, caretaking, respect for your elders. I love it. Hey, do we know what happens in the next episode? What do we have to look forward to next week? Anything oh, Anything dangerous? Anybody else taking their pants off next episode? <laughs> I have to look at the rundown. What is it? Crash Course in Polite Conversations is the next Ooh. episode. Are you guys at home watching along with us? I hope so. I, I hope, hope so, so too. too. It's fun to watch it week by week like we had to in 2003 you know that mm-hmm. weekly anticipation because as i'm washing dishes before we tape these things i'm like man i can't wait like i i know i can't wait yeah i'm excited i hope we and guys we watch these right before we film our podcast mm-hmm. i mean that's how we do it it's not like oh watch it sometime this week like we are sitting down mm-hmm. watching them together and rolling right into taping for you so i hope that you'll watch along with us in fact maybe we should do a live watch sometime like, an, oh, inst- like an Instagram live watch right before we film our podcast or something. Let's yeah. do that. Well, we're going to practice our live events. And I'm really excited about the live event that we have coming up for OTH Thank Day. Um, I hope we get a ton of fan questions. Yep. I think we should all coordinate our outfits. Oh, yes. Right? How? Yeah. What are yes. you guys wearing? I don't know what to wear. I don't either. I'm excited to see you in person, though. That's going to be too. really fun. Me too. So excited. Yeah. All right. So you guys get your tickets to that. Watch uh, watch episode 12. So that way we're all on the same page next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at Drama Queens OTH. Or email us at Drama Queens at iHeartRadio.com. See, See you next time. time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl. Drama girl. Cheering for the right team. Drama